Yeah, the stock market has been on an absolute tear. I mean, globally, equity uh, equities have been doing so well, um, and yet volatility is very low. Uh, trading hasn't been uh, it, there hasn't been a banner year for trading. Um, talk to us about the business of Goldman Sachs here. Well, I mean, overall, of course, the friendly environment um, we call it the Goldilocks lock scenario is good for investors. We've had uh, risk on during the whole of 2017. Directionally, our um, our forecasts went in the right way. We're, ju we're just not optimistic enough. Uh, but all that happened in, a, in an environment of very, very low volatility, which, of course, for our trading business um, is somewhat detrimental, but I would say for a good reason, namely markets performed extremely well, which is good for our investors. So that's good. People are at least making money if they're already in the market. When do you expect the, the trading slump uh, or the trading lull to kind of let off? And when are people going to start acting again? Well, it's, it's not easy to forecast because while volatilities, of course, are um, at record lows, there have been periods in time where markets for entire decades have been quite uh, slow moving in terms of realized volatilities. So in that sense, as long as the central banks are staying on course and interest rates are remaining low and the overall macroeconomic environment is optimistic but not um, but not exuberant, I would say it's not, I wouldn't rule out the sort of uh, gradual um, nudging up of markets to continue for a while. I mean, that's our base case scenario. Well, John uh, Hatzius was on with us earlier. He expects the Fed at least to raise rates th uh, four times this year, yes. which is more than the dot plot suggests. Yep. Uh, Bill Gross is saying that there's a bear market now in bonds. Treasuries are over two and a half percent. Bonds are up, I think, almost 60 ba to 60 basis points today. Uh, do you think the fixed income trading is going to start? Are those wheels going to start turning this year? Well, on the short end of the interest rate, curve, we certainly expect uh, movement in the U.S., but only in the U.S. Uh, for for Europe, for example, we don't foresee anything happening um, in uh, central bank policy rates. Um, and on the long end, we're actually much more um, cautious and think that 10-year uh, rates um, are only going to moderately increase. So the curve in the U.S. is flattening and the curve in Europe isn't doing very much. So, you know, in the um, bottom line, the low volatility environment may still persist for longer um, for a bit longer than we all think. Let's talk for a second about cryptocurrencies because there's been a lot of volatility there. And uh, the story is Goldman Sachs is preparing a crypto trading desk. Um, I'm sure a lot of people talk to you want to get in on the action, right? There's so much to do there, even if even if you're just uh, on the sidelines, sort of dipping in a toe. Yeah, I wouldn't say that that's a theme um, of getting in among the institutional investors. For private investors, of course, there's been a lot of hype, but you know the people who are attending our conference here don't really see um, the cryptocurrencies as an investable asset yet. Um, Focus is on yet. Of course, a lot of people are looking and evaluating and doing the homework on seeing if maybe in the future this could become something bigger. But I would say for the moment, um, for the institutional investor base, um, it's it's an interesting story, but it's far from being a really um, seriously investable asset class. It is one of the most, I mean, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain That's stories are one of the most read uh, yeah. stories on the Bloomberg because of the drama, because yeah. of the volatility. Um, and I'm sure you're right. Most people are just sort of looking from afar. One of the other most read stories on the Bloomberg of 2017 has been about Mifid. Yeah. Um, and it Doesn't seems, surprise me. It seems to have gone up relatively well, the beginning of Mifid. Uh, how does Goldman Sachs, how has Goldman Sachs experienced the beginning of this? Well, I think the industry has put an enormous amount of work into Mifid readiness, um, both on the buy side and the sell side. So I think it's good news that uh, those efforts of being prepared for the uh, start of Mifid have paid off by a fairly smooth, -less, smooth transition relative to the complexity of the task. Um, there were a few glitches, but overall, I would say, very, very smooth start to the process. Of course, the test is still out because the week of trading, as we um, said at the beginning, was friendly and uh, and uh, optimistic and positive. So the, the real test of how the systems work and how everything works will come when volatilities increase at some point. But so far, so good, I would say. And the, 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 there's been a little hiccup as far as dark pool rolls are concerned, but it seems the market's taking that in stride as well. Let me ask you about some uh, some other regulatory issues. One of the debates that's been happening around Europe is whether or not... Um, 
a fund manager should be living in the same place where the fund is domiciled. H- how do you feel about that? What does that, uh, what does that change or, or, or what's the importance of that for, for your business? I, I think it's too early to tell, but um, overall, I mean, I think the industry is faring very well with, uh, with those types of rules where the vast majority, for the ma- vast majority of the asset managers, without there being a formal rule that actually applies, but there is also flexibility on passporting, etc. So I think, you know, I, I would, I wouldn't say that that's top of the list of agenda points that uh, that uh, would need to change or that's foreseen to change. Well, one of the things we're hearing about a lot today is how bad it would be if the UK financial services, at least that's what the Brits are saying, uh, uh, weren't offered uh, access to the European market. Is it in everybody's interest? to get a good deal on Brexit for financial services? I would definitely say so. I think the biggest consensus items, uh, what uh, would be massively beneficial for the financial industry, um, but also the, the, the real producing economy, is if we would get certainty on transitional rules to give the world more time to uh, figure out the ins and outs and the details of a um, Brexit um, plan. Um, And uh, so I think one of the biggest uh, items on the wish list um, is to get transitional periods where the existing rules would persist while we're uh, while the uh, the policymakers are figuring out the exact um, scope of what the post Brexit world will look like. Nonetheless, uh, there's a lot of preparation from firms. Obviously, you want to deal with on uh, deal with things as long as there's uncertainty as quickly as possible. Um, Lloyd Blankfein has tweeted famously that he's going to be spending a lot more time in Frankfurt. Are you starting to move people over here from London? Well, he also said that a London will remain our core hub in uh, the uh, region for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, um, and that we will have several regional offices that are going to gain scale to be closer to clients, um, Paris and Frankfurt, among others, but also uh, cities like Milan, Madrid, um, cities in Scandinavia. So I would say part of the effort is what we're also doing in the U.S., namely opening regional offices with the strategic purpose of being closer to clients. Um, And on the other side, you know, London is and will remain a massive financial hub and the center of our activities in the India region. And of course, the infrastructure is is there. Um, What do you think about the infrastructure in Frankfurt? I mean, could this town absorb a large amount of bankers? Well, we've already seen with the move of the European Central Bank to Frankfurt that the absorption of many very international um, bankers has already taken place. And don't forget, Frankfurt is a very international um, city in terms of uh, the producing economy. There is, you know, Asian automotive uh, manufacturing. There is pharmaceutical industry um, where um, global multinationals are based in Frankfurt and the region. So in that sense, you know, the presence of Europe, of, uh, of international schools of housing and all of those things is much better than um, some people think. And I think, um, you know, just like many other cosmopolitan cities like Paris or Milan, you know, Frankfurt has a lot to offer for international and global and business people.